I'm the first Romanian ever to come to, to Berkeley. Is that right? Yeah. And uh, in 1994, when I first heard about Berkeley, nobody, I mean, uh, there was no internet and there was no, uh, you know, Google and whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, I just uh, got on a piece of, uh, uh, like a music paper, music sheet. I, I've, I've seen somewhere written Boston and I could not even pronounce Massachusetts or something. It was extremely difficult. And I said, that's where I want to go. And then I heard that Quincy Jones was here and all the great musicians. And I'm like, that's where I went up. And four years later, I got a scholarship here and uh, end up at Berkeley. And uh, Berkeley changed my life. I mean, if there was no Berkeley, I wouldn't be where I'm uh, today, honestly. I think actually music made, uh, made me an, uh, an activist in my, in my field, in the Roma, as a Roma leader, as other people, they like to call me. Um, I didn't do it intentionally because there was never my intention to be in politics or uh, there was never my intention to be an activist. And, uh, but uh, at a certain moment, uh, after I uh, went back to Romania, uh, I lived in the States for about seven, eight years after I graduated from Berkeley. Then I was doing here uh, jazz and uh, international pop uh, crossover. And in 2006, I had a, a Roma band, a gypsy band in Romania. Uh, I'm trying to be also politically correct with Roma, but also gypsy for people to understand. And uh, while I was having the band, we had in uh, three years about uh, 650 concerts throughout Europe. And one of the main mission was uh, uh, changing the people's perception about Roma in terms of integration, stigmatization, marginalization and uh, anti-discrimination. And um, due to the fact that I'm a bit, uh, I should say, a rebel a bit, or a bit uh, crazy artist, I used to I used to move lots of masses. We used to have 10,000, 15,000 people. And uh, in the middle of the, the event of the concert, we used to play everybody dancing and happy. And then I would stop and I would have an impact and talking to them about us, Roma, that we are like you, we, we hurt like you, we have people dying in our family, we cry, we get married. So just don't discriminate us. And I guess I was saying the message so strongly that the European Commission uh, contacted me and. Uh, they nominated me as the ambassador of the Roma within the European Union. At the moment, I didn't uh, give so much attention because I didn't care. You know, as a musician, you are not uh, aware of those things when some other type of uh, entity looks at you. Then in 2009, uh, we closed the band. And in 2010, I went back to jazz to do an album. And uh, I came to New York and I stayed here for about a year and working with some great musicians too on an album. And during that summer, there was a huge event and an incident in France with uh, Sarkozy, if you remember, with the president, when uh, they uh, set on fire the, the camps and they sent the Roma back to Romania, and there was a huge, huge problem. And uh, at the moment, no one from the community took the responsibility to do something. And that, that thing drove me crazy. Because I realized at the moment that if, if we are not standing up to, to, to go back to it, I mean, they, we needed a voice to fight for us. We didn't have a, a Martin Luther King, a Malcolm X, somebody to fight for, for, for us as Roma. Especially that we are 12 million people in, in, uh, in Europe and nobody wants to take care of us. So uh, I called my wife and I said, OK, it's done. I'm going in and I'm, I'm going to fight for it. Not as an activist. Because I realized that as a civil society, you are an outsider. I'm going, I'm going in and I'm going to fight them from within. And I went into, into politics, so that, that was the, the click uh, uh, in terms of uh, going to the politics. And, but I, I didn't want in as a, as a politician as much as resolving the issue or tackling the Roma issue. That's, uh, that's my mission. Now, do you still utilize music in any way to... Uh to, to kind of soothe your political adversaries? I, uh, I, I bring a lot of uh, Roma musicians to play and uh, to in, in the type of uh, celebration context. But also, I, I do not want sometimes to do that because I know if, if it's not presented in the right way, an event, it can be, it can be uh, the type of clown. Oh, you know, we bring a couple of Roma, they dance and they play and that's it. And the next day everybody goes home and again we forget about the Roma. And the next day again we discriminate, stigmatize them. They are beggars, they are thieves and we do the same thing. So I'm trying to put them in the right context where to show them that, you see, these people, before they play, I'm trying to do a presentation, a video or something like, look, they have a house, they have a wife, they, they have a insurance, they pay their taxes. So they are not thieves and they are normal people and you should appreciate them for who they are. 
You understand? So that, that's what I'm trying to change a bit the paradigm. But things in, uh, in terms of my political career, things move fast because I was first the prime minister, uh, state councillor on Romania of Romania. Then I became a senator and then within a year and a half I became a, a member of the European Parliament. Because I realized that things cannot happen or only at the level of the national governments. It happens at the European level where it, it's, it's kind of like the Washington of the United States, where you have 751 European uh, members, uh, members that they take the decision for the 28 member states, for 511 million people. And uh, I'm fighting from within, at least first of all, that's my mission for this year. I have a mandate for five years. At least the first year, I'm, I get the 2nd of August as a genocide to be recognized as a resolution because the Roma community was after the Jewish community, the second largest uh, oppressed uh, community, two million people died during the war. Then um, the second thing, which is very important, I, I got a resolution, Roma people to be recognized as the, the, the only European minority with representation in 28 member states. And third of all, within the school curriculum to be recognized that we had the longest slavery in the history of the world, 500 years, which is, uh, I mean, my great grandfather was still a slave. So uh, th those things, if someone would ask me, but yeah, but you're not doing anything for the future. No, I would, I would go to the future, but let me first tell them where we're coming from, because they didn't know until now where we are coming from. And then once I bring them to the present, now I can tell them, okay, now you know who we are. That's what we want to move forward. So what's next for you? Next, uh, the most uh, important, uh, I'm working on a, on, a, on a concept right now and uh, with uh, uh, lots of people, I, 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 just, I just got this type of uh, vision, I, I would say. I'm working on a, uh, on, a, on a holistic approach. Until now, the Roma issue and most of the minorities issues were taken as a priority. Okay, first it's education, health, housing, employment or somebody else would come and would say, no, employment, housing, education, or somebody else, no, housing. And I develop a new, a new theory where in a circle, if you have and you take, you divide it in four with a cross and you have four corners, you have four quarters. If you take one quarter out, you don't have a hole anymore. You have just three quarters. So you need to have all of them in order to, to function. So we have health, housing, education, employment, and all of them they are as equally as a priority. You cannot do just education project without having the other three. Because I, I, I'm trying to explain them through my own experience that I, I, I live through. You cannot go with an empty stomach to school. And then you cannot come uh, in a place where you don't have to sleep after school. And if your parents are not employed, they cannot give you clothes. And it's, it's the whole nine yards and the whole, the same vicious cycle. And I've seen that everywhere from Africa to the favelas, to the African Americans here, to the Native Americans, to the Roma. This, all, all minorities that have been marginalized and uh, discriminated and uh, have uh, social issue problems, they have, all of them, they have the same type of issue. And it's not about tackling one issue at a time. It's about tackling all the issues at the same time. Once you tackle those issues, the, the anti-discrimination issue, it's not a problem anymore. Because we start feeling good about ourselves, about minority, and we, we, are, we, we don't have any more uh, inferiority complex. I was talking before to Victor about this. I mean, we are the ones that we say, okay, I can do it myself. I have a job. I can raise my kids. I pay in taxes. My kids are educated. Okay, so why? I'm, I'm an example. But when you, when you are with an inferiority complex, where you don't have a job, you're begging in the street, you don't have a house, of course, anybody's looking at you, you feel discriminated and you feel weird. So that's exactly what I'm uh, working on. But it's, it's a very complex thing. But uh, uh, hopefully, I, I'm, not giving, I'm not giving up. <laughs>